It may surprise you, but marksmen are actually heroes for players with patience. In the early game you are very weak and almost useless. In the mid game you are starting to become stronger, but you are still extremely vulnerable. But once the late game starts, it's your time to shine and deal a huge amount of damage. Unless you forgot that you are still extremely squishy and die before you could even hit one shot. Today you will learn how to avoid the die all the time and also how you can use your full damage potential. Hello my friends! Today I will go through the different game stages and explain you how you should behave in each of them. Especially in the early game, which is really important. We also talk about how you should position yourself in ganks, so you're not the first one who's dying and also how to be the nightmare for any enemy in the late game. So stay until the end, because only if you use every tip in this video, you can become the perfect marksman. Also let me know in the comments, which is your favorite marksman and why. So, as a marksman player on the gold lane, you have one big problem. You're a side laner and that means you are very dependent on your team, especially in the early and mid game. If they don't gank your lane, but the enemy does non-stop, you have almost no chance to get any advantage. But just because you can't get an advantage, you can avoid dying non-stop and feed the enemy. One simple trick to avoid a situation like this is to ask your teammates in the drafting phase already to gank your lane at least once. This worked wonders for me, because most of my teammates remembered that they should come to me. It doesn't work always of course, but since I started to do that, I have much more often help from my teammates in the early game. And once you start to have a gold lead as a marksman, you can build up on it alone and you are not as dependent on your allies anymore. If your allies doesn't help you though and you are getting ganked non-stop, you need to play really safe. Stay under your turret and only leave it to get the final shot on the minion to farm. Luckily, most enemies aren't smart enough to zone you out until you reach a higher mythic rank. So you shouldn't have too big problems when you focus on getting your minions to farm and otherwise to stay safe under your turret. If 4 enemies come to gank you while you're alone, you can either try to dodge all of the skills, use any CC skills that you have to slow or stun the enemy to escape or even kill one because the turret is focusing them or you just run away and let them destroy your turret. Just really try to avoid dying here because then they get the gold from the kill and also destroy your turret. Better give it up and stay alive and maybe write a quick message to your allies that 4 enemies are ganking you. Yes, some allies will just ignore you completely, but as I said already in previous videos, there are just matchups that you can't win because you got 4 headless chickens as teammates. I mean, just look at these 2 match results. My eyes! Now that we are done with the early game ganks, I want to show you which marksmen are strong or weak in the early game and how you should play with each of them. So. So thanks for your patience and here you have the promised list of marksmen and how strong they are in the early game. Importantly, this is only their strength on the lane. I'm not saying that any of them is particularly strong from a general viewpoint. This is only the case for Popo and a Beatrix who is awesome at aiming. So generally, when you have a strong hero, you can try to dominate your counterpart if it's one from the okay or weak tier. Especially when it's a hero from the weak tier, you could zone them out. So they either can farm or die trying. If if you don't know by the way what zoning out is, you stay near the minions but don't attack them. If your enemy tries to attack them, you attack the enemy and damage them so much that they need to retreat. Afterwards, you try to keep the enemy so far away from the minions as you can so that they don't get any go to XP when one of them dies. With a strong early game hero, this is a perfect strategy to get an advantage over your counterpart. This also works of course if you play on the XP lane. Just be aware, good enemies will gank your lane to help the poor bloke, so it doesn't work forever and you need to be careful and try to stay alive if you get ganked. As a hero with okay damage in the early game, it's depending on against who you are playing. Against a strong enemy, you should try to avoid contact and just get farmed from the minions. You're strong enough that you should be able to avoid getting zoned out if you play smart. Don't attack the minions and only be near them when one of them is about to die and otherwise stay in the bush near your turret or even under your turret. Most enemies will clear the wave mindlessly so you can also get the whole wave under your turret. Basically, play safe until you have your first core item and gank the strong enemy when your teammates are helping you. If you play against an enemy who is about as strong as you are, you can also play it safe in the same way. There's nothing wrong with just farming quietly in the first 5-7 to seven minutes of the game. If you feel confident enough though, you can try to get a kill. But remember, the risk can be
backfire at you when you're the one who dies. You should have a look at your opponent in the first few minutes and estimate their skill. If you think they are really good, play safe. If you think they're a noob, attack them and get an advantage. And when you play against a weak hero, try to zone him out, how I explained it already. Now, what do you do when you play a weak hero? You should definitely play safe. Your time to shine is once you have a couple of core items. So you should really avoid feeding the enemy. Do the same thing as I mentioned before. Try to get all farm from the minions and stay safe otherwise. You can't afford to feed in the early game because you will not reach your power spike when the match is already lost after 10 minutes. Now, there are two more special situations we need to cover. First, if you play in a low rank, the chances are high that the Romas will babysit you. The general power ranking is the same here, but with a good engage from your tank, you do... You could kill a strong early MM with a weak early MM. Also, since you have some protection, you have it easier as a weak MM to farm against a strong MM. So in lower ranks, it's not such a big problem that you are very weak in the early game. Also, since most matches tend to be longer in lower ranks, the weak early game MMs will reach the power spike much more often and therefore also are not bad choices. A Layla in Epic is much more useful than the Layla in Mythic basically. And lastly, what do you do when you play 1v1 against a non-marksman hero on the lane. There are many heroes who are being used on the gold lane that are not marksmen. Examples are Lilia, Valentina, Harith, Alice, Farsa, Lunox, Aldog, Bane, Argus, Cho, Aemon, Kaja, Kagura, Natalia, the list goes on. Almost all of these heroes are stronger in the early game than every MM. So you need to apply the stay safe strategy I was talking about already. Also, request help from your team. Because you have almost no chance against a mage or an assassin like Natalia, Aemon or Saber in a 1v1. If they know what they are doing, they can zone you out and you can't do anything about it. Again, ask for help already in the draft phase, where everyone has time to read your request. If you see the enemies line up and you think that one of those heroes go to the gold lane, request help directly and tell them that you need help against the enemy. Communication in the drafting phase can often be the key to victory. But so many players ignore this sadly. Now, we talked very much about the early game phase. And we're not done yet. The reason behind this is that the early game phase often decides who wins the game. If one marksman have three kills after five minutes and the other one died three times, the marksman with the kills can start to snowball and becomes almost unstoppable. The stronger you are in the early game, the faster you can kill minions, destroy turrets, rotate because you can clear the way faster, support your team earlier in ganks, etc. That's why it's so important to either get an advantage over your counterpart or at least not giving the enemy an advantage over you. Now you know how you should behave depending on which hero you play, but before we move on to the mid game, let me give you some general tips. First, don't demand your tank to babysit you. With the playing safe method, you should be okay on your own, even against two enemies. Just remember, don't die so you don't feed your counterpart. Next, before any match, remember what are your goals. Farm quietly until you have your first two core items, get an advantage over your counterpart if possible, or don't feed them at least, and keep your first turret alive. It can happen easily that you're still from the rush from your last match, where you got 17 kills because you had the gold lead and just shot everything to to the moon who didn't run away fast enough. The thing is, you should always remember as a marksman player that you're starting at the bottom of the food chain again and that you need to work your way up to the top throughout the match again, which will happen at the late game. So don't fall into the trap like me, where I was still in the rush of being unstoppable and crashing down fast after dying twice. Now, we were just talking about fighting your counterpart, but there are still these other four idiots in the enemy team who also want to get some of your nuts. And yes, this beta reference was on purpose, before you ask. The key to avoid getting surprised by the other enemies is of course map awareness. You need to know where every enemy is all the time. And if you don't know where they are, because you haven't seen them on the map for a while, assume that they are waiting in the bush right next to you and stay safe until you know where they are. This requires of course that you look at the map every few seconds, which shouldn't be a problem since you only need to focus on being near the minions for the farm. 
You don't need to look how these poor small creatures beat the crap out of each other. This time you can use to observe the map and make sure you know where your enemies are. And also where your teammates are of course. Especially when they are on the way to your lane. I give you a few examples now regarding map awareness. Example number one. You killed your counterpart but you haven't seen the enemy assassin and rumor for a while. Would you push alone now? The answer is no. As long as you don't know where they are, don't push alone. Because they can easily pick you up and you have no chance against them yet. Example number two. You killed your counterpart and you know where every enemy is. They are either on the mid lane or on the other side lane. Would you push now? Of course you will push now because no one will stop you. Only make sure to check if the enemies from the mid lane are coming to your lane and if they do will treat to not get ganked. Example number three. Three enemies are missing and you're not sure where they are. Would you try to find your counterpart now? The answer is of course no. Whenever you're not sure where the enemies are, stay safe until you know where they are. I think you understand my point about map awareness now. Always be aware where all enemies are and if you don't know where a certain enemy is, assume that they are on the way to your lane. So stay safe until you know where they are. Next, some more quick fire tips. Leave the jungle for the jungler please. The only jungle creep you can touch is the gold crab. Everything else is for the jungler, even the small camps. So please, don't delay the farm of your jungler. Don't rotate further than the mid lane. Don't be that guy that surprise everyone on the other side lane because then your counterpart can push your lane through without any defense. If you want to rotate, only go to the mid lane. You can defend the mid lane for example if your mid laner is dead or busy ganking the other side lane. Just always remember, be careful, you're still very weak. If the turtle is on your side of the map, you can also help to secure it by attacking it. But again, stay safe. I'm I'm saying this 1000 time that you should stay safe because this is the biggest mistake that so many marksman players make. They are not staying safe and forget that they are super squishy and can die easily. So I say it as many times as I can so even if you forget everything in this video, this one thing you will remember from now on. And this will already improve your performance as a marksman by a lot. So it was worth watching this whole thing. Next, I want to talk quickly about items. When you have a general build, you should always have two spare items ready when you play as a marksman they can use attack speed items wind of nature and sea halberd quick quick explanation what both of them can do wind of nature gives you an active skill that lets you become immune to any physical damage for two seconds this is an item that you need when you play for example against a one-shot hero with physical damage see how about you need if the enemy has one or more heroes with strong regen abilities like fanny ruby or Estes, for example once you hit an enemy with any attack the life train effect will be active on them for 3 seconds. This effect reduces the regen abilities by 50%. Like this, you can stop the regen enemies from dominating the game. A general tip, you should know how every item works that you use. So if you care about it, I link the whole playlist in the description where I explain every item. Now we finally reached the mid game, which is not the most fun part as a marksman player yet because that's a late game but we get to that as well. On that note, thank you for watching the whole video I made. I really appreciate I appreciate you guys who watch my whole videos without skipping around. Now that you have your first two core items, you start to become strong. But always remember, although you deal already a good amount of damage, you are still squishy AF and you should always keep a safe distance to the enemy's attack. In the mid game, many ganks are happening and turrets are getting destroyed and you can finally take part in the skirmish. First, most marks are awesome at pushing towers through. So use that strength and push whenever possible together with your team. Just look at my turret damage when I play 1-1. Don't risk it though to push a middle turret through when you're alone. If you're not sure where all enemies are, you can get picked up so easily and die unnecessarily like this. Always remember, stay safe because you can die super fast. Now regarding dying super fast, let's talk about how you should position yourself in ganks. This is one of the most important things you need to know as a marksman because with the wrong positioning, you die before you could even deal any damage. Rule number one, don't jump in first into a gank. You're always squishy AF. So it should be obvious that you shouldn't be the first enemy your enemies see because like this, you die before you deal any damage. Rule number two, don't be too late. Timing is super important as a marksman. You don't want to jump in too early, but also not too late. Don't be that 
marksmen that wait until the whole team is laying in the dirt before they even start to attack the enemy. Rule number 3. Make sure that the enemy can't reach you. This is probably the hardest part. You need to position you need to position yourself in a way that the enemy can't reach you. This is very difficult because staying out of reach of ranged enemies but also be able to attack the enemy is super difficult. The best way is that your allies stun or at least keep the enemy busy so you can come forward and attack them before they can attack you. Let me give you an example of a perfect case. Your tank engages and stuns two squishy enemies. Now you can jump in and focus on the two stunned enemies. You shouldn't focus on attack the enemy tank because they are made to sustain a lot. Ideally another ally is taking care of keeping them away from you. After the both squishy heroes died you can focus on killing the remaining enemies, back out if you lost some HP or simply move on to get an objective. Important here is that you're never getting stunned. If you get stunned by an enemy, the chances are very high that you will die. So always make sure that this is not happening to you. Also position yourself in the way that the enemy's assassin, for example, can't jump you from behind. Have enough allies around you that the enemy is not daring to jump on you. Because they would just die themselves if they would try. You will get better in ganks with experience when you are willing to learn from your mistakes. So if there was a gang in your last match that went really really wrong, go and watch the replay and see for yourself again what happened. You can learn a lot by watching the replays of your matches and I can only recommend this to everyone. Do it from time to time to realize the mistakes you make. Now we need to talk about what you should do when your team is leading, when both teams are leveled and also what you can do when your team is on the back foot. First the easy situation, your team is leading. Basically you just need to pressure the enemy, gank them to increase your advantage even more, destroy their turrets, get the lord and win the game. Don't try to stall the game when you have a huge gold lead. Finish the game as fast as you can because the faster you finish the game the less time the enemy has to make a comeback. If the teams are leveled you have the potential as a marksman to be the key to the victory. Farm as much as possible and get every minion and also jungle creep you can get your hands on. Also make sure to stay alive. There's nothing worse than wasting precious farming time by laying down in the dirt. If you manage to become the hero with the, with the highest amount of gold you can be the deciding key in a gank and destroy the whole enemy team with your allies. Afterwards you can take the first lord and your team gets the lead. The only thing you shouldn't touch are important buffs for the jungler. If you have an ally who greatly benefits from the blue buff for example don't steal it please. Now what can you do when your team is on the back foot? You basically try to continue the stay safe strategy I was talking about in the early game. Try to farm but don't risk that you're dying. Also tell your allies that they should stop ganking. I know this doesn't work many times because some players love to run into the wall with their head first but at least try it. Also always stay hopeful. You as a marksman have the potential to wipe up the whole enemy team once you have your full build. So if you manage to stall the game long enough to reach this point you have a good chance of turning the game around. Giving up is only something for noobs. Especially if you play a marksman who is made for the late game. And since I mentioned the late game now many times let's go now to the glorious land for the marksman. The late game. You should have a lot of core items at this point no matter how your team performs because you were using all the tips I just gave you. No matter how good or bad the game was until now it is your time to shine now so make the best out of it. In ganks nothing changes. You need a good timing and positioning because although you deal an absurd amount of damage at this point you are also still very squishy and you can die easily. Never forget this fact or it will backfire horribly. If you manage to avoid the enemy's attacks and stun attempts though you can wipe out the whole enemy team by now. If you win a gank either attack the lord together with your jungler or try to finish the game by pushing. One super important point here. If you have the chance to attack the enemy's base do it. Don't waste your time by attacking the remaining one or two enemies. Dodge all of their attacks and only focus on attacking the stupid looking base. A very basic tip here. Use the advanced aim option because then you can focus on attacking minions or the turrets and base of the enemy. If you have the chance to destroy the base 
base of the enemy, you as a marksman have to focus it, because you can destroy it faster than almost all of your allies. They should focus on protecting you, so you can destroy it. Even when the late game is the most fun part as a marksman player, because you can easily wipe the floor with many enemies, finish the game if you have the chance. Because in the end, it's not about getting 20 kills and lose the game, it's about winning the game no matter how many kills you got. Now if you want to know which other mistakes you really need to avoid, check out my 50 noob mistakes video from last week now. Also, a huge shout out to my patrons Garo OP, Mist, Twisted J and Nimo Exu. If you want to support my work as well, feel free to join it as well. Have a great day guys!